that. I'm live. Um, and there we go. Okay, great. All right, so all of you out there in virtual land, if uh, one or two of you can let me know that you can see and hear me, I will be happy to do a very special spiritual mind treatment for you if you let me know for what you would like me to do that spiritual mind treatment. I hope that was grammatically correct. So we're all excited this morning, those of us who are present, we're gathering, and um, we've got, I think focus is our idea. So Stephanie and good morning, yes, thank you, and you have won, you are the winner. Uh, awesome. Yes, okay, so of course it's you, right? Of course it's her. We were just praising you, Reverend Rich and I, before everybody came. <laughs> All right, so that's just between us. Okay, I shall now do a spiritual mind treatment. So this word is being spoken for each one. And if there's anyone that you would like to have included, just think of their name. Or if there's any situation or place on the planet that you would like have included, just think of the name of that place or situation. And because the mind of God is infinite and omnipresent, it can handle as many names and places as might occur to us. So we're not stretching God out thin. Okay, so recognizing this one mind being infinite, everywhere present, and infinitely intelligent. It is recognized that this infinite mind is not an expanded human, rational thinking mind. It is a mind that is taking presence as form, as all form. It lives in the cells, in the atoms, in the tissues. It lives in the plants, in the stone, in the human. It lives in the gravity in the invisible and the visible. It lives in the beingness of each one. And, and it is not merely in the human thinking part brain where this mind is. It is in the cells. It is in the skin. It is in the atmosphere around each one. It is in that which creates opportunities, that which creates wonderful experiences. It is this mind that draws two like minds together. And so recognizing this mind, it is also recognized that anything that can be conceived of, any idea that anyone could possibly dream up is an idea in this mind. And this mind can create any idea that it thinks. There is no way anyone can think of an idea that the divine could not create because no one is separated from this one mind. Every thought right now is not even being thought by a separated brain, separated mind of, the, of each person. Every thought being thought right now is being thought in this infinite mind. The infinite mind is the thinker, and each one is this infinite, infinite mind thinking in a particular way, with particular ideas and concepts and thoughts that each one experiences, and it is the activity of infinite mind thinking. And so... All belief in being separated, all belief in let me send this thought to God and God will send something back, is not the truth. The infinite mind's thoughts are present right where each one is in the thinking of each one and every thought that he or she chooses to think is being thought in this infinite mind. And what this infinite mind does is it creates what it thinks. So every idea entertained by anyone, it is possible to be created by this infinite mind. And the only requirement is that the one doing the thinking of the new idea accepts it, agrees with it, cooperates with it, says yes to it. 
And so each one is now consciously choosing wonderful ideas to be thought in this infinite mind. And each one is willing to cooperate, to do what each one is guided to do by that infinite mind, to do what is a part of accepting the fulfillment, accepting the creation of the idea that he or she has chosen to think, has chosen to think. And so this is a natural activity. There's nothing special or woo-woo about it. There is uh, nothing about it that makes anyone better than anyone else because one infinite mind cannot be better here, there, or anywhere. It is all the infinite mind. Each one is thinking with this infinite mind, and each one is therefore the infinite mind thinking of itself. Case closed. So there is no effort required. There is no mental energy that needs to be drummed up. There is no emotional motivation that needs to be drummed up. Each one thinks naturally. In fact, the thinking of the infinite mind in, through, and as each one cannot be stopped. Thinking is continuous whether one is even awake or asleep. The thinking of the infinite mind as each one, through each one, in each one is continuous. There is no break to it. There is no uh, off and on about it. That's what it is. And so each one is now adding their agreement to this flow of divine thought that is present within him or her and is listening to the divine thoughts of I am that I am, the divine thoughts of the great affirmative yes, the divine thoughts of let there be light and there is light and it is good. These divine natural easy thoughts always being the thinking of each one is now consciously realized to be present even in good things. Even in thoughts and ideas that one has never experienced so far, even in thoughts that would be a fulfillment of one's desires, even a thought that has never been thought by anyone on the planet before, it being a thought of good, this infinite mind is thinking it as each one accepts that thought, him or herself. And by knowing it, by thinking it, it creates it. Thought action faction this is the activity of the infinite mind there is no separation in the mind of the divine from what it knows and what it creates what it is is one it knows and is what it knows and this activity again is omnipresent and it is present right where each one is ah so each one relaxes because each one knows that they think and each one accepts it. It's easy to think. And so it is easy to realize that what one thinks is the thought of the infinite mind and what one thinks is created. And so each one relaxes and now chooses to think of the good, the beautiful, the true, the happy, the healthy, the fully supported, the loved, the joyous, the ideas of expressing life and living this life more abundantly, of being a channel for giving the highest and greatest thoughts one can conceive and to become these thoughts and a vehicle for bringing these thoughts to the world. Each one is contemplating ideas of generosity Ideas of thinking of the world as a wonderful place to be. Thinking of humanity with seeing its potential. Seeing its oneness at the core, at the center. That its urge within each one is the divine urge to express more love, more light, more truth, more health, more love, more good, more joy, more goodness more harmony. This is at the core of each one because the core of each one is the same, but yet each one is uniquely particularizing it at the surface. And so each one is seeing what is at the core of every single other person. 
It is the presence of love, the presence of life. It is the soul, the, the unique son and daughter of God itself. And whether anyone else on the planet realizes or not, each one can see it because it is there. It is the light. It is the truth of each one. And it is shining and the flow of life is flowing and each one's awareness of it and acceptance of it for themselves and seeing it in others creates an experience for each one of harmony, of universal acceptance and love and a true wonderful experience of being with others here now on this planet, knowing that all for one, because each one is one with God. And so as a result, each one is in the flow of life. And it is easy, <sighs> it's natural, it's normal, it's happening, Whether and nobody has to do anything to make it happen. It's already happening. And so each one is just going with the flow of life and is therefore experiencing more and more wonderful representations and manifestations of what this life is. This is the truth. I am grateful this is the truth. I release this word to the law, to the infinite mind to continue thinking it without my help whatsoever. It is done and so it is. So it is. And that's the way it is. I had to be careful because I knew I was starting to move around and I it was like all of a sudden, okay, let's stop because <laughs> I'm gonna whack the coffee, whack the, who knows what I'm gonna do. All right, enough with that. Reverend Rich is gonna give us a song. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. It flows like a river. Flows just like a river. Flows just like a river in my soul. Flows just like a river. Flows just like a river. Flows like a river in my soul. I got joy like a fountain. Joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. It flows like a fountain, yes it flows like a fountain. It flows like a fountain in my soul. I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean, I got love. Like like an ocean in my soul, and it flows like an ocean, and it flows just like an ocean, it flows like an ocean in my soul. I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul, and it flows. And it flows like a river. And it flows just like a river. It flows like a river in my soul. Like a river. Peace like a river. Peace like a river in my soul. It flows like a river. It flows like a river. Flows like a river, flows like a river in my soul. Flows like a river in my soul. Flows like a river in my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's 10.30. <laughs> 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 
that's flowing like a river. I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready to receive. I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready to receive. I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready. And so let's take a moment, checking in with our heart, because uh, who cares what you choose? You care. So have that little internal connection with that part of you that wants something more. And whatever that is, just allow it. Allow it to be present. Don't say no to it for now just say it's on the table and so letting our greater good be on the table today we are allowing the divine to flow and in that flow probably bring to us that which we desire it's our choice so we accept it and so it is I am opening I am opening my heart is ready to receive. I am opening. I am opening. My heart is ready to receive. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. 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 Oh boy. Thank you, Reverend Karen, for this morning's meditation. Thank you, Reverend. Reverend. <laughs> Reverend. 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 Reverend Rich. <laughs> for your music and the dancing that we had here. Thank you for coming and attending the service at the Center for Spiritual Living, Princeton. My name is Regina Quince, and I'm one of the licensed practitioners here at this center. For, what, 10 years, right? Um, so that's good. Good, good, good. And we are a loving, healing, and inclusive community which, te which teaches and practices the principles of science of mind for the well-being and spiritual growth of ourselves and the world. And happy Hispanic Heritage Month to all our lovely Hispanic um, parishioners and members of this center and those who watch this video. So. We have some announcements that I want to give that I wrote down. Um, we have a mental equivalent class which is closed and there are no drop-ins. So it's a full class, that's a wonderful thing for us. And um, on September the 25th, we will have um, we'll have the live stream, well, it won't be live stream, but the video stream of this service at 1015. But for those of you who come in person, we're going to be doing something different. We're going to have a peace experience. I'm looking for, for affirmation here, yes. Peace, peace experience and meditation. Um, so if you come in person... Please join us in a different kind of experience at 10.15 and 10.30. But those of you that are virtual, you'll still see the video. So it'll be, um, Reverend Karen will do um, a lesson, meditation and a lesson. So thank you. Uh, let's see. The other thing I want to mention is we have practitioners here who are here to support you, our address and phone, not address, our phone number and email addresses 
are on our website, cslprinceton.org. So reach out to us um, if you need support or when you need support um, or treatment. And also, we have a prayer request form on that website. So if you would just like to reach out to us with a prayer request, you do so through our website. Also, because we're so bountiful, <laughs> if you call our office phone number, there is also a monthly treatment that a practitioner puts on each month for your listening pleasure, and we also have it in Spanish. Wow. So, yeah, we're, we're good, we're good. Um, so, you know, please take, uh, you know, avail yourself of these wonderful sources to continue what Mary said last week, growth, your growth in consciousness. Well, um, I just remembered I was here last Sunday. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, I was here last Sunday. I, I just, you know, you have to be here to understand that. Um, but I was here last Sunday. And one of the words that was in Reverend Kern's lesson was about disturbance. So all this week, I have been thinking of the word, reflecting, contemplating on the word undisturbed. So I'd like someone to tell me, what does undisturbed mean to you? And you can type it in, not that I would see it, but um, uh, you can type in what you think. What does undisturbed mean to you? I'm looking at you, Mary. Peaceful. Peaceful. Anyone else? So strong in your conviction that no matter what the world does, it's not going to mess you up. So that was peaceful and so strong in your conviction that nobody's going to mess it up. And equanimity, no matter what... Like it's generational curses or whatever is going to happen. Mm. Like letting all that crap go and just realizing God has always got my back. Okay, so you have to be here to hear Merle's response here. <laughs> 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 but let me see. But I have a, I think I do. Did I bring it? Um, I guess I didn't bring it. Oh, no. Um, Merriam Webster? says not altered or interfered with there we go. Um, okay also not agitated or troubled hmm. so what do we do with that well when we have good things we're typically not you know disturbed by it we're undisturbed like for me personally um, the last week of uh, uh, August, when I was here, my right foot was hurting, and just a little bit, and I had a conference to go to on Thursday. By Monday, I couldn't walk, and I'm like, oh my gosh, but my foot was healed, and it was very interesting, and I went to the conference, and you know, wow, that was good, that was good. Good, good treatment, Regina. Good treatment. Okay. Also, um, I've been participating in luncheons and celebrations. Um, my uh, chapter, sorority chapter, is, uh, is celebrating their 70th, you know, anniversary. So we've been having events and stuff, and it's been really, really nice. So that's good. And my blood pressure was lowered, you know, um, and I'm like, wow. Okay, that's good. However, there were some unhappy things, or no, I shouldn't say unhappy, but other conditions and situations that presented itself. I have a dear friend that transitioned, and um, I felt that. I felt that. And I'll admit it, I haven't received my $500 a month increase in my income. What's that all about, Regina? Okay. And... I had some structural engineering work that's been going on and a contractor, and it's been a real delay. Um, 
And so here I'm thinking about being undisturbed. How do I not be undisturbed by these things? So I'm going to make an affirmation and I want you to participate with me in this affirmation. Repeat after me. I want you to say I and say your name. So I, I Regina, believe that the God of good is in me as me and of me. Therefore, therefore, I am undisturbed. If you focus on your consciousness, your growth, your belief, when events and situations occur in your experience um, that you didn't really think you were going to invite into your life, then go within. That's the growth. The growth in consciousness, the relying on truth, that sets you free. And so with all of these events, these type of events, you create this attitude, this consciousness of being undisturbed. So folks, chin up, yeah. <laughs> trust. And go forth undisturbed. Yes? Could you say the affirmation one more time? Yes. I, I Regina, I believe that the God of good, believe that the God of good is in me, is in me as me, as me, and of me. And of me. Therefore, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Therefore, Therefore, Therefore I, I am, am undisturbed. undisturbed. Namaste, everybody. Enjoy the service. And this is how you do it. Lay it down. Set it free. Let your heart rest. And let it be. Lay it down, set it free, lay it down on the altar of love. I was walking through the season of dark and lonely change, where the world was on my shoulder, my faith was rearranged. I knew I'd never be given more than I. I could bear. Spirit reassured me that contract would be there. <laughs> so lay it down and set it free. Let your heart rest. Let it be. Lay it down. Set it free. Lay it down. So every single moment I am left with the choice to stay in separation or listen to that voice that beckons me to open and be grateful for every day. It gently reminds me that there is another way. I can lay it down, I can set it free, I can let my heart rest, let it be, I can lay it down, set it free, lay it down on the altar of love, lay it down, and set it free. Let my heart rest. Let it be. Lay it down. Set free. 
it down on the altar of love. Lay it down on the altar. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Jeffrey Starbuck, and I'm a practitioner here. And I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to lead us in a, some sort of exercise or meditation, whatever we want to call it, you'll find out. <coughs> and then do a very powerful spiritual mind treatment <coughs> for the benefit of everybody. Everybody who's here and everybody everywhere else also. <clears throat> so let's start out by uh, breathing in deeply through both nostrils right now. Breathe out deeply through both nostrils. Breathe in deeply through both nostrils. Hold the breath a sec. Now breathe out deeply through both nostrils. Once again, breathe in. Hold the breath, breathe in a little bit more, a little bit more, and now breathe out through both nostrils. And now let the breath go in automatic, meaning it, the body knows how to breathe, let it relax, let, have both feet in the ground, preferably. The eyelids closed. <clears throat> and listen to these words and ponder them. When was the last time you did something for the first time? This is something good we're talking about here. When is the last time you did something for the first time? This is not a, a test, by the way. There's not going to be any quiz at the end. When is the last time you shouted yes very excitedly with great animation? What was the last time that you shouted yes? I'm not asking you to sort of be primarily cognitively thinking right now, just kind of feeling, feeling into this. When is the last time you stepped, you surprised yourself by stepping way, way out of your comfort zone and it went okay, it went beautifully? When is the last time you went from, I don't think I can, straight to, I can, I can do this? Or even when it went kind of gradually. When is the last time you felt a primal excitement stirring deeply within? When is the last time you felt full of energy, your body was tingling, kind of fizzing with energy, <clears throat> positive energy? When is the last time you had an incredibly original thought and you actually did something about it? When is the last time you imagined that you could do it? And when is the last time that you did something, as far as you're aware, completely new that you had never done before? <clears throat> so the purpose of all of this is has to do with Stretching the imagination, allowing the imagination to expand, <clears throat> allowing the presence of power and of 
joy, and of energy, prana, expand your sphere, expand your mind, expand your field, expand your definition of what it is you are and what it is you're doing here this time. When is the last time you didn't care if you might embarrass yourself? <laughs> when is the last time you didn't care that it was okay because you were doing something that was joyful, that was, you were feeling exuberance. You were feeling a happiness that was expanding outside of your body. When is the last time you shouted, I can do it? When is the last time you imagined what would happen if I actually dared to let that dream, whatever it is for you, I actually dared to let that dream that, to say to myself, maybe I could do that. Maybe that could happen. When is the last time that you did something for the very first time? When is the last time that you allowed yourself to be big? And I'm not talking about in terms of physical size here. To be spiritually, psychically, energetically big. <clears throat> and now everybody everywhere on the screen, in the future, in the past, in this room, to raise your hands up in the air and to shout with me, yes I can, yes I can. Let's do that again. Yes I can. And let's be even more daring right now and to actually uh, stand up. Stand on your two feet, or however many feet you have. <laughs> and let's do this. Hold your arms out and be big and say, yes, yes I, can. I can. Yes, yes I, can. I can. Close your eyelids. Uh, if you need balance, don't do it. But, but just do it to sort of stay within your body, to stay within yourself. Uh, close your eyes and uh, yeah, uh, st stretch up. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. One more time. Yes, I can. One more time. Yes, I can. Very good. Now you can bring your arms down and you can uh, uh, sit in your chair if you want to and feel the energy in your body, feel the, the prana, the chi circulating in the physical body and all around and all about the physical body, outside of the surface of the physical body, your field, your energy field. And now I will speak this word, I am speaking this word right now <clears throat> for everybody who is present, everybody who is listening, everybody who is thought of by somebody present, and all those on this planet and any place that are allied in consciousness that would want this. There is one power, <clears throat> one presence, one life, one joy, one love, one wisdom. It is undivided and undividable. It is everywhere. It spreads out over the face, the face of the earth. It is spread out over the face of this earth. It is everywhere. It is inside and outside, and it is good. And it is animating. It is present in every single one. It is physically present as health. 
It is present as love and connectedness. It is present as joy. It is present as clear and abundant articulation of the gifts that are within each one, the gifts that are expressing through each one, the gifts that want to express through each one. The talents, the gifts are now expressing. It is a, a present as wisdom. It is present as love. It is present as right action and as clear articulation and guidance. It is telling each one what they need to know, wherever they need to go, whoever they need to speak to. It is guiding each one. It is always present and it is good. And it is in favor, 100% in favor of each one because each one is its expression. Each one is not separate from or apart from this one great good. Cannot be apart from. <clears throat> Even when somebody stumbles or has a funny thought or a weird thought or a, a disconnected thought or accidentally does something that isn't cool, that they don't really want to do. This one is there, it is, it is guiding and guarding and advising. It is helping each one do whatever they need to do to clean up anything they may have done. This presence is wonderful and it is felt as joy. It is felt as a joy bubbling up from within. It is felt as rivers of living water inside, within and on the surface and without. It is an animating force. It is an, a force of inclusion and wonder and joy. And it is doing anything and everything that needs to be done to whenever there is congestion or, or whatever there is. And there is, so there is now full and complete circulation on every level and on every path, in every way. So each one is now feeling happy by whatever definition they have of that, what that is. Each one is feeling happier than they have ever felt before. Each one is knowing that there is this great good life that is being lived and is happy about that and is eager for more. And knowing that this word has, has been spoken, is being spoken, and it, it is already being done. It has already been delivered. It is being delivered as the word is being spoken right now. It is being created. It is reliable. And join me now in, in releasing this word and saying, and so it is. And so it is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There was a time in my life but I had to do it all for myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient Didn't know the love of God was at hand But now I can say if you're discouraged Waiting for that contractor to show up this day You've got to let it all go You've got to let it all go And this is what you have to say I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life And my heart has opened wide Cause I'm only here for God No more troubles, no more strife with my faith, I have seen the light. I have faith in the Spirit. If I'm only here for God, I release 
so I can see everybody who's here, right? Okay, good. Um, so I'm using this l wonderful little book written by Eric Butterworth called In the Flow of Life. It's been around on my uh, shelf for years unread. I, I mean, I don't, even, I don't even know how it got into my possession, but divine guidance, I'm in the flow. So our topic today is getting in and staying in the flow of life because one of the points that he makes and all spiritual uh, mystics, people who have contacted uh, some sort of the div divine omnipresence, whatever, say that life just is. It's just flowing without our help whatsoever. And that if we just connect with all that is, Everything will just unfold in our lives just beautifully and easily. So he's talking about in the flow of life, his definition of life is not just our little lives. It's in the flow of, the univ of that which is flowing as the universe. That's how big this life is that we are in the flow of. And he makes this point that we're always in the flow, but our problem is we might believe we're not, and so we struggle. And one of the possible reasons why that might create that in us is, he says that uh, there's two prevailing attitudes about this thing called life. So see which one you are living or are familiar with. Number one. We come into the world as empty creatures who go forth in life to be filled. Life for us at any time is the sum of what has happened to us and what we have been able to accumulate in wisdom, experience, or things. I've heard that definition. I see some nods. Right? Or two. We come into the world as living souls of infinite potentiality to be discovered and released for life is lived from within out. Now, that's what we all want to, <laughs> those of us who are here, right? But you know, uh, in my opinion, most of our education system, and certainly I was in agreement with it when I was uh, a part of that is, you know nothing, and we are here to shove everything that you need to have in your brain, in your brain. And so it was a whole lot of memorizing this and studying this and understanding this. And I remember um, when I went to graduate school, I just thought of the enormity of knowledge that I had to shove into my, into my being. And I was rejoiced to think that I could exclude China. <laughs> I'm like, it's a big country. I don't think I'll ever have a need to know anything about it whatsoever. So I'm just going to cross that off my list of, of knowledge of the world that I have to ram into my head. And um, at the start of my graduate school, I was assigned to the chairman of the department, who was Chinese, and who asked me to assist him in his paper on Mao Zedong. Now, I had never heard of the gentleman before, and the whole history of China, I had to study to get anywhere near uh, an understanding so that I could assist and support him, and I have a feeling I didn't help him at all. But uh, my tuition was paid for for that, so, you know, I was in the flow. But 
but it was interesting that my human decision, I don't need to know anything about this entire country that's like a, a third of the world or something. And, um, and then that immediate response I'm saying of the universe saying, oh no, you cannot exclude anything. It's all yours. But then what's, what's, what's to do, you know, doctorates, you know, go to school as many times as you can, you know, you know, um, I read a book called uh, Mr. Know-it-all, someone who apparently read the entire encyclopedia and knew everything, and I'm like, darn, I, that was on my list. Remember when we had encyclopedias and you really thought if you read it all, you'd have it all in you, right? And how many did that? Gary did. <laughs> Gary, did you? I believe he did. Okay, all right, so, uh, but see, the problem with that kind of believing about yourself is you're essentially saying, I don't have enough. I came in empty. I got nothing. And I need to get something from the world, about the world, in order to somehow participate in the world. I need to have a skill. I need to have a career. I need to learn something so that I can participate in life. And then, you know, this other definition of what life is about is um, we come as living souls of infinite potentiality. This is the exact opposite. This, this says we come in full. Full. Nothing's missing. And what our experience in life is is to discover what that is and we discover it by listening to ourselves by following our own inclinations and by being very aware being very aware it goes on to say let me see if i can find it because i've been so excited i dropped my place it was some smart person who said, yes, Walter Russell, he says, artist, scientist, philosopher, said, the universe gives to those who plug in. Mediocrity is self-inflicted and genius is self-bestowed. So how many of us in my day it was determined what your IQ was. And then you got assigned. And then there you were. So genius was uh, something that the world thought that it could measure. But you see, if we are souls of infinite potentiality, how can you measure that? Any measurement that might be designed is only measuring an aspect of those who already have expressed themselves. But being infinite potentiality, maybe you're one of those types that no one's seen so far. And so how can, how can someone who has never been seen so far be measured? He points out that we are one at the source, but each one of us on the surface is here to be a unique expression based upon what, what our path has, and, 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 and by path I include our, what our train of thinking has brought out in us. And we, be, we are thinking, you know, from the moment of uh, emergence in consciousness, uh, and who knows when that is, it's certainly not when the, when the egg and the sperm got together, <laughs> sometime before that, I, and who knows. It doesn't matter, but the thing is, is that we are having a stream of thought moving through us. And that is what determines what is happening to us on the outside and what we are giving and what we are expressing. So being in the flow of life, we first of all need to realize we are in the flow. This stream of thought that has been present with us since we've been present is continuing and we just want to be aware that that's going on and then 
when we are in the flow, we discover that life is ah, easy. It's a cinch. So you all know that I'm rowing at the moment, and I love Jeff's questions. When was the last time you did something for the first time? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm still working through that, still in dislike it, still facing it, blah, blah, blah. It's still in process, but it's already old news to me because I'm, I'm in the flow, listening to inner guidance and doing what I'm guided to do. And so, uh, being in a boat, I would like you all to imagine yourselves in a boat, a kayak or a canoe, something where you only have one little paddle, okay? And you could go on either side depending upon what you want. And so you're all in a, 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 a pretty river, a nice river. Make it a nice river, okay? And you're right in the middle of it, and your boat, you, are in the flow. So just imagine yourself yesterday morning. You woke up, and I would like you to imagine your day as if it was a day where you were floating down the river. And what I want you to realize is, while you are floating there, flowing and moving there, notice if a log showed up and got in the way and you had to deal with it. And was there a problem? And if there was, how did you deal with it? It's just a log or maybe just a bunch of flotsam and jetsam. You know, maybe some uh, recyclables that were inappropriately recycled. <laughs> um, and you can imagine that it, it was up to you, it's just a log, it's just a bunch of plastic bottles or something, uh, but you're in your boat and your boat is in the flow. It can easily uh, push it out of the way without you really doing anything, but your noticing of that, being there, what did that do to you? <coughs> did it bring up guilt? Did it bring up some sort of emotion where you, where you lost that sense of being in the flow? And did you move past it? And if you moved past it, did you forget about it? Or did I just remind you and you're all going, oh, I've got to think about that again. So then... Keep going through that day, and uh, or if you like, begin this day, and imagine your flow, so that you always have that choice to navigate yourself around the little bits and stuff of weeds and, um, oops, there's a giant fish underneath you, whatever, you're able to move. But you can also look forward down the stream to where you're going. And you realize that if you look to where you want to go, you're better able to steer yourself there. And now I want, what I want you to realize is your oar, your steering, is your thoughts. It's that easy. You're steering with your thoughts. You saw that big old log over there, and you had that thought of, ooh, I might get hurt. No, 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 I'm going to go around it. And you steered around it. I'm okay. And then you saw that bunch of recyclables and you thought, that darn world, when will people take care of the planet, right? And then, you know, maybe you picked it all up and put it in the back of your boat. Uh, maybe you said a prayer or maybe you could care less and you just moved on. But again, those are all thoughts. Nothing special, right or wrong about any of those thoughts. It just determines what your experience is in that river. And now I want you to imagine that the river's getting a little bit more challenging, a little faster. The current's a little bit faster, faster than what you're used to. So you're going to get to your greater good faster, but you've never gone that fast before. So maybe you need to pay a little bit more attention. Maybe you need to steer a little bit more 
Or maybe you notice that you're really afraid. And maybe you notice that over by the side of the river, the water is still. And maybe you, let's, let's just for now, let's go over there. Over into that still part of the water. So the river is still ahead of you with its scary increase in velocity, but you're over on the side and you're able to take a breath and you're not moving. And I don't know how long you might want to stay there, but what I know is if you do stay there for any great length of time, that water around you starts getting really murky and smelly. Still water, not a good thing. And maybe as that current continues to increase in its velocity, it creates a little eddy where you are so that you find yourself going around and around and around. You're not going forward anymore, but your boat is spinning around and around with the same old thoughts about yourself. I want to go forward, but no, I'm afraid. I, wanna, I know the next step is, but no, I'm not ready to take it. I really should do it, but no, not now. I'll sleep on it. Let me go ahead and do this. Do the, Da, da, da. Those, those little thoughts that keep you at the side of the flow of life. And we all have them, believe me, I know, right? And uh, as, I, as those of you who have been around for the past few weeks, you know that for seven years I was, you know, in the rowing club, but not rowing because I did not want to learn how to be a coxswain because I was too afraid to leave the boat. So I just... For seven years, I just, in fact, Facebook came up going, today is my face first day of rowing. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you had no idea. But for seven years in that eddy, and the thing, wa the thing was is I didn't know I was in that eddy. So I invite you to think about where are you not moving in your world? Maybe you really think you're in the flow and you're moving from good to greater good, and maybe in some ways you are, but there's a part of your boat that's just twiddling around. And you know you've got two choices. You could stay there, but it's getting smellier and uglier, and the current is getting stronger and stronger. So the longer you delay, the more you're gonna have to face. Because that current, that flow is increasing its pace. And it would have been easier if you had stayed in it and you would have been learning as you go and as it increased its, its velocity. But now you're gonna have to like, you know, jump into, you remember Double Dutch? Where, you know, you, <laughs> 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 whatever, right? I mean, <laughs> um, and then you watch someone, right, who, who's really good at it and they're just like barely moving and you're like, what was I doing? Um, but so what we want to realize is that that flow of life is there. It didn't go away and it's yours. And so you took a little time out, fine. But the flow is calling you and unfortunately, and I can, I can testify to this, to get back into that flow, you have to face that fear that made you go off into the side. You have to face it. And so, and as you, so submit, let's, let's turn our boat around and get ready and paddle right back into that center and turn the boat downstream and keep breathing and fl go with the flow. And maybe you're not a very good rower. Maybe the boat is f flipping you from side to side and you're scared and you realize I don't know how to do it, but you still have your oar and it's still, the water is still pushing your boat forward so that if you just calm down, the water itself will carry you. And so imagine yourself, some area of your life, 
getting into the flow. At first, it might be really shaky. Maybe it's scary. Da, 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 da. But imagine yourself suddenly being lifted up by the water, and all of a sudden, you realize, I'm doing it. Oh, this is easy. Oh, I can relax again, right? And we paddle away for a while. And so now you can imagine tomorrow morning. And you've been paddling in the flow, having a lovely, lovely Sunday. And you wake up and, and ahead of you, you see a beaver dam <laughs> blocking the flow. What do you do? You're not going to go upstream. You could sit there and look at it. It's not going anywhere. And you see these beavers are still building it higher and higher. So the longer you sit, the bigger this dam is going to be. And this is, you didn't, right? The beavers did this. Not me. But Eric Butterworth tells us, and right, Walter Russell said, it, that dam is self-inflicted. This is a, us moving so far out of our comfort zone that we're finally seeing all the denials and all the blocks that have kept us in that eddy. We thought that the problem with th that made us go into the eddy was that increasing rapid uh, flow of water. But something in us knew if you go in there, you're going to end up at this big, gigunda blockage and your canoe can't get through it. Right? So maybe try ramming the bow of your canoe had it a couple times, right? You know, maybe the beaver drops a stick and looks at you, but you know, it keeps right about right on building it. And so what you want to realize is those beavers are you, that part of you that's building up a lifetime of, I can't do it. It's impossible. Maybe other people can do it, but not me. I'm too scared. I'm too old. I'm too pretty. I'm too whatever. Uh, it's like, you know, the, or no one else has done it. All of a lifetime of no, 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 no's is there before you. But this is our moment. It's our moment. It's what we are here to experience in life. Because, again, if we're number two believers, I am infinite potentiality. And that infinite potentiality requires me to be on the other side of this dam. Right? Beaver is actually a good color. You read about it. So you make those beavers your friend. Yeah. <laughs> right? And they still keep building the dam. Because that's what beavers do. <laughs> They're not going to stop building a dam. That's what they do. And so um, you, again, staying in the flow of life, we're in it. We want to stay in it. We go within. And we ask that higher self, the higher self that can see above and see beyond, that higher self to guide us through onto the other side. And it will. There is a way. There is a way to get to the other side. I don't know what it is for you, but I know it's not ramming the boat into the dam. I know that much. Been there, done that. But it could be uh, something that requires some effort. You might have to get out of the boat, which is you, but get out of that personality shell that you've been having around you and lifting it up. And you might have to carry that thing over the dam or around it on the side. Portage, they call it, right? Is that what they call it? Thank you. I did it once. Because <laughs> that canoe's heavy. But uh, it's there. Maybe, and maybe to make it easier to carry, we have to empty those recyclables and other trash that we had piled up in our kayak early on. And these other things that we had to make it easier to carry it over. Um, and, and yet we can. There is a way to empty what we've got to carry enough so that it is portable. 
that those parts of us that are essential, those parts of us that we're going to want to have with us when we get to the other side. And we're going to have to leave all that stuff that was weighing us down and all that's, those thoughts that created this dam in front of us, this blockage. And so while we're sitting there in front of this huge thing, it seems impossible. And it seems really, really hard. But being in the flow of life requires us to go forward. And we can't do it based upon what we can rationally see in front of us, right? We have to raise ourselves up. We have to ask for inner guidance. Which, what's the easiest way <laughs> to get around here? Uh, maybe, maybe you had brought a shovel <laughs> and you start shoveling your way through this. Uh, but somehow, you know that your greater good and to stay in the flow of life requires you to somehow move past this dam and to take your kayak with you. Somehow. And there is a way to do it. Not easy. Maybe not fun. Maybe challenging. Maybe you're going to have to be on the other side for a while doing push-ups. Until you can build yourself up enough so you could get yourself over, but you got to do what you got to do. And so Eric Butterworth tells us that this flow of life is always there, and it is us up to us to go with it. It's an action. It's not drifting in a boat with your hand, you know. <laughs> brushing against the water as it passes, you know, and sipping a little cocktail. And, and someone, a, a gondolier, <laughs> singing through you, for you. What was that? Some brie. And some brie. And yes, and a baguette. And this, yes, and a little umbrella protecting you from the shade. That's not living. That's not the flow of life. That is total dependency. That is being, that is number one. That is, uh, he says at the very beginning, uh, he says that Paul said, uh, you know, one of those saints, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold your minds from within. So that... You, we aren't here to be carried along by the world. We are here to go with the flow. And it requires the use of our thoughts, our steering, and choices. Choices of which side to steer, how effective we are. So here's a strong thought, here's a, here's a weak thought. And here's a thought that makes me go backwards. That's horrible. Um, or let me get out of the flow and take a breather over here in this little stagnant pool of water. Or let me go around and around and around and around again with my pattern, with my thoughts, with my life. And, and there's that darn dam at the, at the end. But once we've moved through all this stuff, and we're on the other side. We get to we get to do it all again. <laughs> right? There's going to be more eddies and more uh, logs and uh, and an even bigger dam down the way. But the thing is, we will know that we can get through it, and that it's worth it, and that we don't get destroyed in the process and that we can handle it, and that it is really scary, and that we can take a time out, and that we can go, oh, here we go again. But, but it's, it's worth it, because we're becoming more and more aware of who we truly are, the further down the river we go. And we become lighter and stronger in who we are, lighter in the junk that the world put on us, and stronger in who we are. I mean, as, as Jess had us do, you know, what was it? I can do it? I Is that what you really said? Yes, can. Yeah. Yes, do you know there's a woman who does, has a whole TED talk about how to, like, give a confident talk? And she says, before you go on stage, just stand, stand there like this. 
It's that posture, right? Look, I'm totally open. Totally open. And I'm going, yeah, yeah. I don't like that posture. But my I, success has been about healthy boundaries. Gary and I had a baby for one about healthy boundaries. Well, see, healthy boundaries are part of being in the flow, right? I'm in the river. I'm not going over to your river. You know, and, and just because you're enticing me from the shore, you know, to come, you know, eat your pumpkin, um, which next week, no, next uh, end of October, Pumpkin Day will be here. That's just a little side. Uh, you no, you're you're staying in your on your course, and you know what that is, and you're being in right when you're in the flow. Even if when you're in the flow of the river, sometimes. You can't see where the water is flowing, but you can tell where it's taking you. You can see how you're moving. And so it's, it's that inner guidance in us that is helping us. The, fl the, the point Eric Butterworth makes over and over, and in Spiritual Economics, his great book on, on work and money and wealth and abundance, and he says it again here in this book, he says, the flow is there and you're already in it. Mm -hmm. oh. Cooperate. <laughs> Cooperate. And then everything is given to you. Indeed. All that your heart desires Indeed. is given to you, oh. is down the way. It's there, it's meant for you. If you have the desire for it, it's meant for you. It's what's drawing you forward along your path. But you have to cooperate. The first thing you have to do, right? We think, I want more money. So we think the first thing I have to do is, let me work to get more money. And what Eric Butterworth tells us is, no, no, no. The first thing to do is to get back into your boat mm -hmm. and move down where it leads you. And it will lead you to the more money and that expression which we call work. You'll be led to it. You know, like a, a magnet. Yeah, mm. a money magnet. <laughs> a money magnet, right? Yeah, a money magnet. We think right, we're, the money magnet is here and it's drawing all the money toward us. Maybe the magnet is God going, leading you toward it. Okay, so with these thoughts, uh, let's take a moment and uh, contemplate them all as we have Reverend Rich uh, inspire us with another song. Sounds like country early. <laughs> no. no. What is it? If you've been thinking you're all you've got, then don't feel alone anymore. Because when we're together, You've got a lot, cause I am the river, you are the shore. And it goes on and on, watching the river run, further and further from things that we've got, leading them one by one. Winding and swirling and dancing along, we pass the old willow tree, where lovers caress as we sing them our song, rejoicing together we greet the sea. And it goes on and on, watching the river run, further and further from things that we've done.
our spiritual practice we've got uh, for this week, um, Eric Butterworth tells us, take a moment, a few moments in bed, even before you get up, and get yourself plugged in to that river. And so take a moment, close your eyes, and let's just know what he tells us to affirm. I am in the flow of life, and I move easily with the flow. I am radiantly and enthusiastically alive. I am free from tension, stress, and strain, and I go forward in the flow of life, unhurried, unworried, and undisturbed. And then he decides through the rest of our day to make a determination to paddle so that you're always in the flow. And so this word is being spoken for each one. There is only one life, and that life of God is flowing into expression as this entire universe and everything in it. It is flowing into expression in, through, as, and all around each one. And there is a path, there is a way for this flowing of the divine unfoldment to operate in, through, and as each one so that each one is harmoniously, gently, peacefully, confidently, and definitely moving forward in that flow of life and experiencing its flow from good to greater good. This is the truth, and grateful it's the truth. I release this word to God's law. It is done, and so it is. And that's the way it is. That's it, God. My feet, walk by the this race. God, my feet, walk by the this race. I said, God, my feet, walk by the this race. Cause I don't want to run this race in vain. I said, I'm a child. So thank you all for being here, and thank you out there, Margie, Tina, Debbie, Robert, Scott, Michael, Debbie Joy, Angela, and Clee, and Stephanie Ann. It's good to have you all here, and I can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye.